to my entire new convert book uh, before uh, they leave. And then sometime uh, they don't want to leave. And I don't want them to leave until they feel comfortable in leaving. The only thing about that, I have to put them out. They just want to stay, but I don't want to know. know. But uh, I have to put them out in order for them to grow. But on the average of a year, uh, sometime longer, uh, in, in working with them. But now they start working now before they leave the new country class now. They start working in, in various ministries because I encourage them to go through uh, the training in the various ministries, but they want to go back through it because most of the time when we are taught something, we don't get it all at that time anyway, so they feel more comfortable, and so that's what we were doing in doing that. It's something Brother Green said, a while ago, Brother Green on that Southwestern thing. It was a young man in that class <coughs> workshop. He had finished Southwestern, and he was in graduate school and getting ready to apply for his doctorate. And he came to me and he asked me, he said, Brother McClendon, I said, why is it that we don't know what you are teaching? And so I was kind of reluctant about telling him, but the young man needed an answer. <coughs> he had gone to Southwestern and he had gone to Harding, I believe it was. He had gone there and he was getting ready for his uh, doctorate. And I said, well, to be honest with you, you don't know because you weren't taught. <laughs> That's all that is. You weren't taught it. And, 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 and you weren't. They, weren't. they were taught Greek and Hebrew and how to exegete and all that kind of stuff like that. But they weren't taught uh, that. And, and it wasn't their, their fault uh, in doing that. And they could get in the pulpit and preach up a storm, you know. And people shout hallelujah, praise the Lord and everything. But... Uh, uh, you got to be able to train your people how to do it, but you can't train people how to do what you don't know how to do and what you're not doing. Any other question? Uh, another thing I want to say, too, I, I went through some of these things real fast, um, and uh, if you want some of them to be explained more in details as to how they work, I'd be glad to uh, do that because I didn't know my time limit. And so I didn't spend a whole lot of time on going into details on some of the things as much as I just kind of zipped through them. So. Good job. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Y
and no, and, and I think he may mention at the time you you were uh, you were doing secular labor, labor before you went into in, 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 into into uh, having your you know being full time, and that you started with a few members and and you didn't your building wasn't as large, but now look what you have. Now my question is, I said all that to say this: At what point did you realize that you needed to put in place uh, other components? that was going to help you keep the save saved because like you made mention in your presentation that uh, you're going to have to have a, some of something, see if they fall through this crack, you got to have something right. else to catch them here. Right. At what point and in how many stages do you have to, uh, if they fall through this crack, this crack, and that crack, what do you have, how many, at least how many stages do you have to keep them and if they fall through certain many stages, you got another stage that's going to really keep them there. Okay, that's what I showed you. Yeah. I think you missed it. Uh, well, I'll, I'll probably walk in. I'll probably walk in. Yeah, I think you missed it there. Uh, that is right here. I'll have to go for back retention, right? Yeah. Uh, retention. And uh, like I said here, there are many programs that can be used to help retain the new members. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that any one program will do the job by itself. And so we have layers of programs that can be falling through the crack. And uh, here are some of the programs we have to retain the members. Now the best program, the first line of defense right there is teaching and instilling the basic fundamental in them time to get into the church, which would be the new members class. Get them in there as soon as you possibly can, just get them in there. That foundation is really what's going to hold them. Although you might get them coming otherwise, if you don't hurry and get some foundation under them, when the storms come, they out of there. But if you get the foundation, they may even leave, but they're going to come back because they got a foundation, you see. And see, if they ain't got no foundation, they're going to leave and they're going to ever come back because they don't have the foundation, you see. So that foundation is of the utmost importance to get it there as soon as possible. Some of the members that's in the church now, they've been in the church for years, some of their problems, they don't have a foundation. That's why you're having problems out of them. They don't have a foundation. I'm, I'm going to go through the rest of these two you asked on there, yeah. Okay, now, you, you also say about the, the older members who don't have that foundation. Now, have you have you developed your, uh, like you developed this? I know it took you some a, a, yeah. a moment. Are, are you thinking in, long, in that line of developing uh, uh, a workshop or either a presentation to the point where it's going to help those older members who uh, do not have a foundation? to get that foundation so that they can start from where they are. Well, now, that's very good there, yeah. what you just said there. It's not the one foundation, whether you're old or whether you're young. Let me tell you what some of the congregations are doing in the country. And I'll tell you one in particular, uh, Fifth, not Fifth Ward, but uh, uh, West Union, out in uh, uh, Houston. And, and there are some of the other congregations that are doing it. They are taking their whole congregation through that new convert book. That whole congregation is going through that new convert book. Because you know what I found out? Uh, the majority of your members in, your, in any particular congregation cannot tell a person what to do to be saved and give a scripture to them. And the reason why I know that, I, when I go to congregation, I show the leadership what they have. I say, you got me here to teach people uh, how to say I said, let me show you what you got here. And I have the people, and I said, raise your hand. How many people know what to do to be saved? Just those, those five things. And we might have 75% of them raise their hand. I said, okay, keep your hand up. How many of you can give one scripture to each one of those things and another 50% of those people take their hands down. They cannot give, hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized in a scripture to back it up. And that's what we're dealing with in our congregations. And, and also, you, you may mention uh, South Union in Houston. Uh, see, South Union is full of blood for the crusade. See, South Union, the elders oversee the work of the yeah. crusade. And years, they were, well, they were thinking about it, and now they when you brought it out, they brought you in because, see, 
they, they were saying, well, what can we do? We, we, we pushing, we helping, we supporting this thing, but we need to do something at home. They did. And they brought you uh, in. And they did. And they ordered, I forget, about three or four hundred. Okay. And they took the whole congregation through that. So make sure that they had the front Let me tell you what is happening when we go to congregation, when you go to congregations. You go to a congregation and you, we assume too much. We assume just because the people have been in the church for a certain amount of years that they know certain things. They don't. We are good fakers. We are good fakers when it comes to the church and knowing. And that's why you see brother and keep messing up. And you wonder, why they mess, brother been in the church so long they messing up? We are faking it because we really don't know. But we don't want to let you know. So what I do and what I encourage people to do if a new preacher going to a congregation, take that church through, train them in every aspect of the work of the church. If they say, I already know that, good, just reinforce what you know. But I want to make sure that you know. So that when I ask you to do something, then I know that you know, and I'm not assuming that you know. Now, if you do that, then you know that they know. But when you go to a congregation and assume that they've been in the church for a number of years and that they know, they really don't know. I'm going to tell you that right now. And so that's why. Now, now, training is one of the main things that I'm finding that we are not doing enough of. Do you not realize that I take the whole month of January, every January, every year, and I do workshops the entire month of January? I do evangelism workshop, I do discipleship workshop, I do zone care workshop, I do uh, greeters workshop, I do workshops the entire month of January. And then during the year, I do uh, a few workshops, study training. That's our job, men. That's our job. Not in the pulpit all the time, but we are to train people. And if we can't do it ourselves, Get somebody who have expertise in that area. Don't put him in the pulpit. Put him down here and train those people. And do you not know, we have to admit that we can't do it all ourselves. We can't do it all ourselves. And so we just got to train people. And that's what's going on. Question. Yeah. Uh, Brother when a person takes membership in your congregation, do they go through orientation, or when are they allowed to teach or be over a ministry? That's a good question. I sit and talk with them personally and tell them about, uh, you know, the work of the church. Um, most of the people that place their membership with our congregation go through the new members class if they've been in the church 20 years. And guess what? When they go through that new members class, they say, I've never been taught this. Mm 